first time they've actually interviewed someone who's actually a professional interviewer. So there's a little bit of pressure yeah. over here. A lot, a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. Oh, pressure. Okay. I'm a really tough interviewee. Oh, oh yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. We'll crack you. We'll I'm crack tricky, you. I'm tricky. Kevin, you... Kevin Moore. Get to you. Yeah. Um, and you interview someone pretty big really early on, David Cassidy. Your first day on radio. Yeah, first day on radio. David Cassidy flew in. We, we kept friends after that and uh, did quite a bit of stuff with him. I thought was, that was how radio was. Uh, the first day um, uh, on local radio, uh, our boss, Neil French Blake, who'd taken me on uh, for three reasons. He said, he said, I want you on my station for three reasons. Oh. I said, what? And he said, one, you're very English, two, you're mildly eccentric, and three, you're a bloody good opening bowler. I said, what's that <laughs> going to do? He said, I'm starting a cricket team and you're opening my bowling. Oh. Anyway, on day one, he tried to get all the big names to go into the town centre in Reading to do all the stuff with that, and nobody wanted to do it. Yeah. Oh, 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 don't do so you yo, you new boy. <laughs> yeah, so I went down there and you're getting your clothes ripped off. David Cassidy flies in, yeah. the girls are screaming. I thought, I love, I love this. This, this is clearly what every day in radio is like. Yeah. And of course, uh, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. And how did the interview go? Was it good interview? Oh, uh, you like to think so at the time. I never like to hear them back just in case it wasn't. Uh, but of course, yeah, you always like to think Do they are. Do you get nervous when you interview certain people or not? Have you ever not been really? Not really, no, no, because it's not about you, it's about them. Mm. And you're the conduit, you're not yeah. the... You, know, you do hear interviews talking a lot about themselves and you'll try to make the other person feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And people are different. Some people are monosyllabic, so you're trying extra hard to make them feel comfortable, to find mm -hmm. something that they want to talk about. You know, you do get tricky people and you yeah. get other people that know exactly what you want and go, yeah, you prompt them with a story and they go, yeah, 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 yeah. And they come out with it. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, everyone's different, but you're there to to bring them out in a way, mm. or try to. Did we start bringing you up with our Hoover? You've already, you've already brought me out. Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm already I'm already there. I'm up front now. There we yeah, go. Yeah. I'm, I'm spilling the beans. You are the juice. Yeah. The juice is running. Yeah. So given that juice is now running, um, <laughs> who's been the trickiest person to interview? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll give you mine if you give me yours. Okay. Oh. Uh, well, very recent. I mean, there's a promoter that brings people in from the States. So I did Al Pacino who was fine but tricky i mean his manager said you'll find a real problem getting in there and because uh, he just <laughs> talks incessantly and I, okay fine so i had to work a way of doing it if al's in the middle of a story you know and, and there are two thousand people who pay good money you don't want to buy it hey we shut up Al's telling a story but you still got to move him on yeah. you know otherwise it becomes one long story uh <laughs> so i thought what can i do so i did the the Movement. I did a movement, so the audience didn't really notice, but he knew I wanted to get in. That worked. Um, Stallone, uh, uh, Sly Stallone was great because he knew what I wanted, and I started with a story about him. You know, everyone stood and cheered him, and I said, "They're cheering you now." I said, "But we're a nation of dog lovers. And you sold your dog for fifty dollars, didn't you?" You went, "What?" Oh, oh. so. Oh my then, God! I look at him in a different way now. Yeah, and then he, because um, he hadn't got any money, and two weeks later. He got four hundred thousand dollars for the first Rocky. Damn it. So he went back to the guy, this it's a little guy he'd sold the uh, the dog to. And he said, "Hey, I want to buy my dog back." He said, "Oh, my kids have got so attached to it. They got really attached to the dog now." And he said, what? "How much attached?" He said, two thousand dollars attached. <laughs> two thousand dollars back for a fifty dollar dog." And he had to give him a part in the film as well. Bad, but he was good. He knew what was wanted. Fury Sky interviewed Chevy Chase. Different story. Uh oh. Chevy they all Chase? said. They all said he was tricky, and I got hammered for it. I got really hammered on social media for it. Why? And uh, he thought it was great. He thought it was great. We couldn't hear each other. The sound at Hammersmith was appalling. It was appalling. We were just guessing what each other was saying. So this three, is on stage? Three, it's on stage, yeah. Uh, three, three and a half thousand people. Uh, and it was really tricky. He, there were several questions that he wanted. It was set in stone. I, I want to be asked these questions. Okay, fine. Oh, God. You must ask these questions. Okay. And each question, each of those questions that was asked, he blanked. He totally blanked them. Okay, so he's hanging you out to dry. So you're trying to find a way, you're trying to talk with him about uh, writing for Mad Magazine, which he did in the early days. Not much. Talking about the films. Oh my gosh. Uh, not much. Okay, we're talking about the vacation films, big films, a little bit, not much. Beforehand, he was writing down the names of his leading ladies. I said, you must remember them. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so there was something <laughs> wrong somewhere. Um, and then we're talking about uh, his, his Fletch films. I didn't get much of him. And I, oh talking about some of his ancestors, because two of his ancestors went over on the Mayflower. 
Mm. And two of his ancestors were uh, New York mayors. One used to own 30,000 acres in New Jersey. Now, if I said that to somebody like Stallone, they'd go, oh, if only I had that now, 30,000 acres. But he didn't. He sort of blanked it. And the questions he wanted, he then blanked. So he, he enjoys hanging the interviewer out to dry a bit. It's a bit like um, a politician in a way, although yeah. they do, they, they so talk. it was tricky, right? but he seemed to enjoy it. Mm. Um, and at the end, I thought, well, <laughs> I'll let him take the applause. Benjamin, you know, um, Charlie Chase walked off. Uh, to applaud them back, he chucked the mic on here, bounced on the floor. That in that, it was me storming off and him throwing the mic on the floor. Wow. Uh, so that was uh, that was the weirdest interview mm. that I've ever done. And everyone said, oh, you're a terrible car crash interview. But the two TVs he'd done here were car crash as well. They were both, I mean, a lot of, a lot of people in the States won't work with him for that reason. Yeah. But I thought, well, all I can do is ask him the questions. Uh, but of course, it's your fault because everyone loves Chevy. Oh, well, you know, you yeah, were rubbish, yeah. you know, but... You know, if he says, I want those questions, you think he's going to answer them. Yeah, and he of course, doesn't. yeah. If, if the talent is off with you with the questions, you've, you've got no, no... Yeah, nowhere to go. Yeah, nowhere to go. So, nowhere so to go. it is tricky. So you're doing a lot of talking because he's not. And then he was saying, oh, you're talking about yourself a lot. No, I'm trying to find a so, route to market yeah, here. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Difficult. Yeah. And you've got a new radio station launching quite soon, right? We have United DJs in the wake of United Artists 100 years ago with Charlie Chaplin, Douglas Fairbanks, Mary Pickford. Uh, they didn't want the restrictions and, and, and constriction of, of studios saying, this is what we want, we want format stuff. Radios have become a bit like that, so we thought we'd start United DJs, get away from the format, play some really good music and open it up and uh, create a mini revolution like oh, in, in awesome. films. So we are United DJs, we have eight former Radio 1 DJs, wow. eight former Capital DJs and 12 former Radio Luxembourg DJs. Wow. Any other Just names people would have heard of? Hmm? Any other names people would have heard of? Uh, yeah, from Radio On, we've got people, uh, Adrian John that did the early breakfast show before me while I was doing the breakfast show. Um, a couple of other people we can only name when we start. Yeah. Um, uh, Emperor Roscoe was on there as well. So, yeah, quite a few. Uh, uh, David Hamilton was on Radio 1, Radio 2. David Simon's on Radio 1, oh, Radio 2. So, right. yeah, lots of, uh, lots of people. So, yeah, good. Right, and where, where do people go to find out about it? Uh, we'll be online to start with. Uh, so, apps, you just get an app now. I mean, that's how I listen to radio. Uh, I just just switch on the app so you can just do it walking around in the car yep. on your laptop. You don't need to just be in the kitchen anymore to turn it. I'm going out now. I'll turn it off. You know. Well, Capital Radio was doing um, a cash giveaway over Christmas, and I, I had the app on the whole time because I really yeah, thought yeah. I was going to be able to yeah. call in and win. But of course, I kept missing it. You know, yeah. I was sitting at home. Oh, the stupid yeah. app throwing the phone. You know, I don't like Capital Radio anymore. I used to like it. I used to listen to it all the time. You know, when uh, Chris would do the uh, the ticky. Um, there was like a ticky competition. Oh, I know, that pounds. was so scary. Like the Two boom, pounds. I'm freaking yeah. out. hundred pounds. It's horrible. I don't understand it anymore. What, you just miss it because of that? Well, I miss it because of that. The terror base is all like, I, I, I hate modern pop. That's yeah, the, that's I, the yeah, I understand. Because obviously music, it would, I mean, modern music, I don't know if you'd agree, Mike, it's just, not. Well, there are some great songs, uh, not as many as there were, as but there are some very, very good songs around. Um, it's just knowing them, yeah. finding them, having the ears to find them. A lot of people that run radio uh, haven't sat this side of the desk. No. They're not musicians, they're not singers. I mean, I mean, for me, I've always been a songwriter, I've played live. Yeah. So you get an idea of what's good and you go, oh, that's, that's all. It. I mean, the, um, I emailed a friend of mine who's the head of Radio 2 playlist the other day and I just heard this song. What's this song? Yeah. Just heard it. Yeah. Yeah. And he came out and said, song. I said, it's great. Yeah. He said, yeah, you're yeah. right. You, you know, you, you, you've heard it. And I said, yeah, what a great song. So there are good songs around. And it's, it's rare, though. It's rare. You suddenly, because yeah. I did that the other day, it was like Justin Timberlake. Um, yeah. The Say Something song that's just come out. And I was like, this is... And I felt like such an old woman because I, yeah. I was at work saying, this is what real music yeah. is. This is like oh, going yeah. back, you know. Not well, it's a variation as well. Okay. I mean, you, you, you know, in the 80s, you know, on the breakfast show, I might play, you know, something that was quite heavy rock, yeah. something that was reggae, something that was new romantic, you know, the jam, bit of punk. So was, the, the production values are varied. Uh, now they tend to go on, oh, it's that big name. They've got a new single out. Yeah. We'll play it. That's yeah. it. That, that, that gives us a great lead into your lip sync track. Easy for you to say. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is that. Um, what are you can do? Uh, well, my favourite all time singer is Scott Walker. Um, so I could either have a go at uh, Joanna, which is a great ballad, uh, but people might nod off to sleep, or uh, The Sun Ain't Gonna Shine Any More, which is, which is a number one and uh, more up tempo. So. Um, yeah, either of those. I'm not yeah. sure. I mean, so it's the coin toss time, really. I don't Aww. know. Please do check out Mike's Lip Sync. You'll find a link for that on the left 
of the screen. On the right hand side of the screen you'll see another link which is a lip sync that I did that Mike helped me with. If you did enjoy what you just saw then please do subscribe to our channel. Our big goal for the year is to hit 10,000 subscribers. As soon as we do we could turn what we do into more of a chat show format by using the YouTube space in London. So your support really is appreciated. Thanks again to Lucky Voice for allowing us to use their venue for this shoot.